Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I am super excited to share with you my custom glass shader material for path tracing in Unreal Engine 5. As most of you guys know, I'm a huge fan of path tracing in Unreal Engine, and I have been slowly developing and creating my own custom glass shader, and I am super excited to share that with you. It should be available on the Unreal Marketplace, and uh, today's video, I'm basically going to give you an overview of what comes with it, what all you get, how to use it, and some general uh, um, examples of how you can use it. So let's get started. So first things first, let's get this out of the way. This shader is built specifically for path tracing, not lumen, not standard ray tracing, path tracing only. So obviously, if you add this into your project, you need to make sure that ray tracing is enabled and you are in path tracing mode in your viewer. Just know that when you're navigating in your viewport and you're in lumen mode uh, for simplicity, the glass is not going to look accurate. You will need to switch back and forth between lumen and path tracing to make sure you see what the path tracing version actually looks like. However, lumen is obviously much quicker and easier to move around. So here we are in our sample project scene. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in path tracing mode here just so you can get the general idea of all the glass shaders as we browse around through the project. In the sample level here, you can see I've put on several pieces on display of how you can use the glass material in different ways, such as clear and opaque, emissive, imperfections and normal maps and so forth. So I have this inside of a lit room based off of an HDRI. So if you do have any troubles with this project, make sure that the HDRI plugin is enabled. You will need that. It should come out the box, but just in case. So I went ahead and created cameras in the scene that highlight the different materials here that we have pre-made for us. So let's jump on over to the first camera, which is our clear camera. This is our basic clear, ready to go, clean glass in path tracing here. Uh, I have it on the Unreal sample uh, sphere here. Um, and I've left the inside material on the sphere so you can see the transparency and translucency through the material of the glass shader. I also have a simple glass pane here so it can show you both on a sphere object and a simple uh, glass pane such as a window. Next, camera two is our opaque glass, and this here will have a little bit of opaqueness along with some color. So if you needed to do some sort of colored glass, um, this would be a great way to do it. Um, this, of course, requires some sort of opacity, not just completely clear. Our next few cameras are going to be the normal map glass. So what these are are glass materials that use a simple normal map texture to create some pretty cool effects um, such as these two here. It's called Chord on the left side and Hammered on the right side. Just a pretty cool decorative version of the glass. Our next camera here gives two examples of some raindrops on the left side and some more rain drips kind of running down the glass on the right side. Uh, this will work great for some environments and uh, glass windows and exteriors. And the last of our normal map based glass is Spectrum and Waterfall. Um, these could be used in some other decorative ways or potentially a water looking type of uh, fountains or something of that sort. Next, we have emissive glass. So using a slight opacity change and some emissive qualities, you can create some glass that would actually have some emissive properties to it. The next three cameras are going to be our imperfection materials, and these are going to be things like uh, smudges and fingerprints, scratches. This is a great way to add realism to your glass texture on top of your objects. Here is imperfection glass one and two. We have imperfections three and four. And here we have imperfections five, along with a colored tinted version of the imperfection mask. This could be used for dirt or blood or mud or anything of that sort. Um, by changing a couple of the values, you can add some tinting to the imperfections and give a pretty cool effect here. And last but not least in version one of the glass shader pack is bubble. And this is a pretty cool effect that causes a huge shift depending on your camera angle based on the object that you are looking at. 
I'm going to jump out of the camera here and you can see as I move around the color hue shift changes similar to what you might see in an actual bubble or um, oil based glass or something of that sort. It's a pretty cool effect. Now let's get to the nitty gritty and check out the actual contents of what you get in the shader pack here. In our content browser, you will be presented with a folder called PT Glass Shader. This here is going to contain all the elements that you need built on the path tracing shader. The first folder here is environment, and this contains our HDRI that we are using and also a sample sequence, which helps you switch through the cameras. We also have a meshes folder, which contains our sample Unreal Engine sphere and also our blank glass plane. And our primary folder here is the glass material folder. This folder is broken down into subfolders containing all the elements you need to create your path traced shader. Folder number one is our master material. The glass shader is built off a single master material, which you can use in multiple instances to create any of these glass shader examples that you've seen. Our second folder here is our instances, and these are several example material instances that have already been created and are being used on these sample spheres that you see in the project. Our third folder here is our imperfections masks. So these are all the textures that are used for the imperfections. These can be modified. You can create your own or add any other ones that you choose. Folder number four is our normal maps here. And these are all the normal maps that are used for some of the glass uh, normal map shaders. Um, you can, of course, add your own to this as you please. And our fifth folder here is our texture folder, which is containing just a simple black and white texture. Let's go ahead and take a very quick look at the material instances that come pre-made and ready for you here. So let's start with our clear glass. This is the, our basic simple clear glass. And of course, in this view, it's not going to look correct because we are in lit mode. However, switching to path tracing gives you a black window. So let's keep it in lit for now. And we can always go back to our scene when you're ready to check out the changes. So as you can see here, um, it is very cleanly laid out and everything is labeled, so it's pretty easy to browse. On our clear glass here, everything's pretty simple. Under our global parameters here, we have a color which does not take effect on our clear glass. Um, the base color amount you can use to amplify the color as you do change it for other materials. Um, we have a refraction amount and glass is a typical 1.5, 1.52 and glass, so that gives us proper refraction. We also have our roughness amount. Glass is typically at a 0% roughness, very shiny. Um, however, if you do wish to create a frosted glass, you can simply bump this up a little bit, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and you can start creating some really nice looking frosted glass. Next category here we have is our imperfections, and is this is a simple checkbox if you want to have it uh, and perfection mask turned on, you simply turn that on. And by turning this on, you will need to actually add an imperfection mask. This will give you some properties to how you can change it. Pretty simple. The next section here is normals. The glass shader does have a built in uh, normal blending mode. So what you can do is if your object already has a current normal map that you need to use, you can simply do that here in this um, normal section here. And if you choose and you would like to add a separate normals map, such as the raindrops or other decorative things, you can add a extra normal map here. So use the primary normal map for your original object normal map if you choose or you can always use that as your added normal map. Next, there is some metallic settings there. You probably won't use this very often, but for some very specialty cases, you do have the ability to change the metallic values and add a metallic texture. Same thing here goes for specular. You can adjust the specular values and give it a specular texture if you need to. Our next section here is emissive. This of course requires some sort of opacity for it to work. Um, I would always recommend if you can start with one of the material instances that already has an emissive property and build it from there. You can adjust the emissive amount and the color here. Next, of course, is opacity. So this is how clear your glass is. 
typical glass here, we're going to have it at 0 0.05. And if you need to add an opacity mask there, there is an option to do that. However, of course, um, things like um, opaque and emissive glass need to have some sort of opacity. So that is what this value will be used for most of the time. The next section is also pretty uncommon, but it is an ambient occlusion section where you can adjust the values of that and the texture. And the very last section here is the bubble mode. So this is a, basically a checkbox that will override a lot of other um, options and enable the bubble mode that we saw there on the last material. Um, you can still adjust a few of the values afterwards. However, this one does override several of the options. So there you have it. These simple options help you to create just about any glass shader material, especially those that we have exampled in our project here, simply by changing most of these values here. So let's jump into a couple of the other example material instances and show you how they work. Our first example here is the opaque glass. And as you can see here, I have simply added a red color to it. And uh, the base color amount is at one. Uh, your refraction and roughness is still the same. However, you'll notice down here in opacity, I have increased the, the opacity to 0.15. And without in changing your opacity, you will not see the color. So you can see here, it does require opacity and then that is also noted under that option. This one's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Next is our emissive glass here, uh, a very similar example. We have turned on the emissive color and increase the emissive amount here to about three. Another one of these that requires opacity. So I have the opacity set to 0.2. Next here, we have our bubble material. And you can see here, it's basically all the same settings that we've had before. However, we have checked the box for bubble color. Now within bubble color, we have multiple settings inside of there that will change the bubble intensity. So that is the color amount. You can also change the tiling of how the color hue shift tiles, how many multiple times. Um, there is also an adjustment for the actual refraction amount within that, and also the exponent in, which will change the amount of area of the rim that it covers within your actual object. Um, you'll want to tweak with these, play with them, try out different settings, see what works for your particular object and what size and scale that you're working with. Next, we have one of our imperfections glass materials. And this here, you can see we have done basically checked on the imperfections texture and we have added that texture here. Uh, this will normally just start out as a blank black texture. So make sure you change that to one of the options that you have in the pack or choose your own. You can adjust the imperfection amount. So how strong the actual imperfection is overriding the roughness of the glass shader. Um, you can also, there is a checkbox here. If you are using materials from Quixel Megascan, a lot of those actually have um, imperfections, but they use only the red channel. So you can use that to check only the red channel if you need to. And then you also have imperfection contrast. And what this does is say your imperfection mask is not quite black where you need it to be, which would be a zero roughness or clear glass. You can use this to create a little bit of contrast on your actual image there so that you're not getting a completely cloudy looking glass and you can actually get some clear glass with the imperfections. Um, you can also change the tiling and offset the rotation angle, and of course, um, I'll talk about the um, tinting option here in this next one. And everything else after that is pretty much just the same settings as your normal glass. Now here we have our example of the, the tinted imperfections here. And you'll see we have turned on imperfection texture, we've added our texture in, we have a, a actual amount of imperfection at 10. I have checked the uh, red channel on this particular texture here. And you'll see we have imperfection tint has been checked on. So at this point, you will be able to enable the actual color that you wish to use and the intensity of that. 
Um, this is vastly going to vary depending on the color that you're using, uh, the power of your imperfection mask, um, your scene, your lighting. So you're definitely going to want to tweak with these settings quite a bit just to see what's going to work specifically for your scene. This can be used for blood and mud, dust, dirt, things of that sort, not just a roughness value imperfection. And last but not least in our glass shader here is the normal map based ones here. So you'll see it's a pretty simple basic glass setup. However, we have our normal map section here. Now remember this normal map section here is for your actual object that you're placing on. So if you still want to use the normal map of the object that you plan on putting the glass material on, you can do that. So here you will, however, check the box that says add extra normal map. If you wish to use these added things such as the raindrops and decorative modes, you will check that box there. And what that does is you will have options for tiling and offset. You'll also have rotation settings. Then you have a normal map power. So using values of one or greater will give you more strength or what appears to be more power and strength of the normal map. And you will drop in your texture here or use one of the ones included in the pack. As with most all really good shaders, this is built off a single master material here. Let's take a quick look here. You can see it's cleanly documented and commented and labeled. So if you do need to make some changes to modify for your specific application, it will be very easy to do so. Uh, this is super easy to create your own material instances off of and create some pretty customized materials. So there you have it. This is my path tracing glass shader pack that will be available on the Unreal Marketplace. I will link it down in the description below. Um, please check it out if you get a chance. Um, I would greatly appreciate any feedback. There will definitely be uh, more versions coming out in the future as I figure out some more options. I have some pretty cool things in mind. I'm hoping to do some dirt buildup, um, uh, some better frosted style materials that will create some pretty cool effects. So uh, definitely check it out. And I will be, of, of course, updating that as I make it better. I'm also going to link down below a specific website page that I've built um, talking about all the features and everything about the shader pack. Um, and some of the examples and ways that I've personally used it. So make sure you check that out. Um, and that'd be a cool way to see um, some different styles and ways that you can use the glass shader pack in, uh, pack in your projects. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate your guys' feedback. And uh, until the next video, peace out.